Fantasy TV. No, a friend of mine told me that... Yes, yeah, still my friend. Yes. A, a friend of mine told me that one of her friends is it was able to explain to her how God can have a free will, free will, and human beings can also have a free will at the same time. Yeah. I said, well, how long did it take to explain that? About five hours. I, I, I can understand. It would take five hours to explain the unexplainable. Yeah, it just made so much sense about, about you know, how God can be doing everything, and I mean everything. But then people have an individual realm where they can do anything they want without God influencing them. But, of course, God still does everything. Wow, he did that in only five hours? That's amazing. I said, there's a name for that special skill. There is? She said, what? what's the name? I said, it's called Baffling with Bullshit. Martin Zender here. Happy to be with you on a Monday. Yeah, that's what it's called. It's um, frightening, really. Uh, but I I'm going to demonstrate something for you. I was thinking of this today as these objections come forth. Not from everybody, but... Uh, people conceive of God, like I'm going to draw a circle here, believe it or not. So so there's God's will, right? They're in, in this circle. You see that? Now, people think that they have a, a free will inside of that circle. I'm going to draw that. They have a free will inside of the circle. Here, Here's their free will inside of the circle. See? No, that's not a misshapen donut. No, it's not an olive. This is a human's free will right here inside of God's free will. God has a free will. There, 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 there's, there's one problem with this. Do you notice that, I want to make sure you notice this, the line, the lines of the circle inside the circle are unbroken, okay? There's no unbroken line here, as much as it looks like. There's no unbroken line. So this is airtight. You can't, God can't get at it. God comes at it this way, I can't get it. This way, no. This way, no. God can't get at it. I can't see what I'm doing here. So you see what I God goes in here. No, no, no. There, there's no opening because it's, it's free. There's a sovereign realm where this, this person has a sovereign realm. God can't get in it. And that's what they say. Well, I, I, I point out to people over and over again that a free will means an uninfluenced will. Uninfluenced. Independent. Yep, that's right. They say, yep, independent. Yep, uninfluenced. Because, well, they have to say that because if a will is influenced, then it's not free. I do convince some people to be. I do convince some people to be that logical once in a while. That's right. If a will is influenced, it's not free. If it's controlled in any way, it's not free. So this has to be airtight. This little this little pimento in the olive has to be airtight. But wait a minute. If it's airtight, I'm gonna get to that in a second. They say this. They say that well, if if, if this little pimento here gets. Uh, gets a hankering to like maybe make a break for the wall to just like take over God and they just try to make a break here and then circle God like they're going to take over Godhood. Well, no, see, God won't let that happen because he's going to invade. See, he is going to make a move, a counter move, and he's going to go in here and stop the insurgency. But wait, how could he stop the insurgency if this is a continually linked circle? He can't stop. He can't stop because it's it's free you can't get in here it's a pure it is a free will it's free it's free but then like i say people who believe in free will and the sovereignty of god they have absolutely no problem contradicting themselves no problem at all they just do it off the top of their heads like i gave the example last week like two trains crashing in the night head head first crashing and they say train wreck what, what train wreck? There's no train wreck here. This is perfectly compatible. You see, if this is actually a free will, God can't get it. God can't do anything to derail it because then he would have to influence it. The only way God could influence it is if there was a hole here. What if there was an opening? Just a little bit of an opening right here. A little gate right there in the, in the human's little free will area here. No, this is not a fertilized egg in the womb. This is not a sperm. Who said it was a sperm? Well, yeah, it does kind of look like a sperm, like a two-headed sperm. All right, let's say there was a little gate here. Well, then God could get in. I agree. But if there's a little gate, then there's no free will. Hello? If there's a little gatey where God can get in, 
then it's not free will, is it? What does a little tiny pinprick do to a balloon? Just a little pinprick. Yeah, it wrecks the whole balloon. So you either have no free will or you have all free will. So what I'm going to get at here is what I'm going to say right now. I'm getting at it as I speak. Is it putting this circle of human sovereignty inside the God circle is cosmetic purposes only. People only do that to, to um, make themselves look good. To give the impression that they're giving credence to God's will. Yes, he's got the ultimate will. But yes, no, he doesn't. You can put this circle anywhere. You can put it out here. You can put it out here. You can put it out here. Putting it in here is cosmetic. Well, we believe that God has the ultimate control. Bullshit. No, you don't, because <laughs> this is completely unbroken. Well, God could get in. Oh, then it's not free. Got them over a barrel. But the thing is, they don't know that. It's weird. They don't know they're over a barrel. But that, you see, it can be anywhere. Boom, 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 boom. I was saying last week that, you know, you could use your little bit of free will to take the whole free will. But really, this little bit of free will is the whole free will. This is the whole enchilada right here. This is everything. If, if, if this wall around the circle is completely unbroken, if it is a solid wall, impenetrable, then that's the whole thing. There's no such thing as a little free will. That's also cosmetic. We'll put the word little in front of it. We just want a little bit of free will, a limited free will, sort of free will. Does, does that sound theological, sort of a free will? We, don't we see the phrase limited free will and sort of free will and free free will? Don't we see that all over the Bible? No, we don't see it one place because it's not true. That does not stop the free will, people. No, no, they keep coming up with these diagrams and different ways to explain it. And they talk for hours and hours and then other people listen to them and they go, well, that sounds right, does it? Does, how about Romans 9? Does that sound right? Ooh, they hate Romans 9, the potter and the clay. Anyway, I've talked about that. So... Calling it limited free will is is cosmetic, just for looks, just to help them seem like they still give credence to the sovereignty of God. They don't, but they like to pretend that they do. So they say, well, just a little free will. No, if this circle is enclosed, it's total. And you don't need to put it in here. If God can't get at it, that doesn't matter if it's in here. If God can't penetrate it, and he can't, if the walls are solid, you might as well put it out here, out here, out here, apart from God. God can't get it. If God can get it, then it's not free. I win. I win. As usual. Okay. Um, now, concerning evil. Concerning God's use of an adversary. Um, it is difficult for some people to think that God does evil. Um, so, God does work through an intermedi intermediary. It's really merciful of him to work through an intermediary. God created an intermediary called Satan. Or, uh, as I like to say, Satan. Because it, it irritates him to mispronounce his name. So God creates Satan to do his necessary dirty work. I've been thinking about this for a long time. And God does this for the sake of juveniles. For, for the sake of people who aren't ready to really accept the fact that God does everything. God starts out like one step removed. He's still operating all in accord with the counsel of his will, but he's one step removed in that he use an, uses an intermediary. So, again, it helps uh, the young, really, to see that... Well, no, it doesn't. It eventually does not help them. This is why. This is why. Um, because... The young eventually come to see that well, there seems to be a struggle going on because God presents this as a life and death struggle. We know it's not. That's only the action on the stage. We're going to get to the stage here, what I promised you last week. So there is action on a stage when God takes the uh, figure of speech known as anthropomorphia or condescension to talk to us in our own language. And he does appear several places in Scripture to be struggling with evil. And in a way, the young person kind of likes to see that God's struggling against bad things. Good. Like God's the good guy, and then there's the bad guy. It's a simple little story. You know, there's the bad guy, Satan. And there's the good guy, God, and they're fighting it out in the ring. But um, the problem comes when it starts to look like uh, Satan is winning. It starts to look like the evil 
is conquering the good. And then when you show the young person, Isaiah 45, 7, that God creates evil, then there's, there's a panic attack. Because again, it looks, if people are just staring at the stage only and not looking what's happening above the stage, it looks like evil is winning. So the comfort of watching God like fight evil, it lasts only until one chokes on the very thought, on even the possibility that evil could conquer good. And it could conquer good. It would have it would conquer good if, as the Christians tell us, evil is eternal. It would definitely conquer good, would it not? So the sane person, and there are some out there, the sane person eventually asked why God appears to not only be struggling with evil but losing. Uh, why does he appear to be grappling against an adversary? In fact, an adversary that you, Martin Zender, tell me that he himself created. Uh, why is this going on? Has God's own creation, here's the question, has God's own creation broke the leash? Now, talk about a nightmare. You don't have a nightmare that God is not in control of evil. There's your nightmare. As hard as it is to swallow the fact that God created evil, and it is hard some days, I admit that to you. I don't love it, but I have to face the facts. We have to be mature and face the facts. Isaiah 45, 7, God says he created evil, so we have to wrap our heads around that. doesn't mean we have to like it. But as hard as that is, how can you live and sleep thinking that evil is not under the control of God, it was not created by God, that it came as some accident, some oversight, some glitch in the plan. Because if that indeed was the case, and God can't, God couldn't keep it out. Well, that's okay, God couldn't keep it out, but he promises to put it back in. Yeah, God says, yeah, okay, yes, that's true. I was uh, on a distant celestial detail when Satan tricked Eve in the Garden of Eden. I didn't see that one coming, but I raced to the scene, and I said, what have you done, Adam? Where are you? Eve, where are you? What's happened? What's happened to my universe? I don't know how you can sleep at night if that's how you think it is. But the truth is that all this was part of a great plan. Now, before I go on here, yesterday I published a video that I recorded in 1996, or maybe it was 1997, in Fairview, South Carolina, called God Causes Everything. It goes right along with this. You have to see this video. I'm so happy with it. I listened to it on Saturday for the first time in 10 or 12 years, and I was blown away by it. It is excellent. What can I say? It's freaking amazing. And then our friend Rodney Paris of Texas has put gorgeous video behind it. The undersea world is fish, and there's sharks, and there's little crabs and octopi and everything. It's, it's just beautiful. There's nothing like seeing a school of fish going by while yours truly is talking about how God causes events to happen, not allow them. Oh, that's beautiful to see that. It's just a beautiful cocktail. You must, must watch this and send it to your friends. It's so powerful. It's so good. It's so true. Um, so I'm going to put the link down here. If you didn't see it on Sunday, you have to watch it. Please send it to your friends. This will get them. If they don't get the complete sovereignty of God after watching this, then they are truly, truly locked up in stubbornness, as God said everyone is, Romans 11:32. So please watch that. It's a hell of a series. It's eight series, eight tape series I made in 96, 97, and uh, I made it in in different cities, different states. I think the next one coming up was in Kitchener, Ontario, Canada. This one was in South Carolina. One was in Michigan, uh, Almont, Michigan. One was in De Detroit. No, not Detroit. One was in... Who cares where they were? One was in Ohio. Who cares? I'm sorry. That would be the ultimate nightmare if evil has broken the leash. But if the scenario I gave you from the Garden of Eden is true... Then evil did break the leash. Oh, say, yeah, so God promises after the Garden of Eden, oh, don't worry, I just let that part get away from me, but I'll make it up to you. I'm going to do away with Satan. I'm going to push him in the back in the bottle. I'm going to send him to uh, the submerged chaos, to the lake of fire when it's time. Oh, really, are you? How do we know you're going to do that? You couldn't stop him from coming in. 
You couldn't stop the thing from happening, according to the Christian legend. You're a hapless, bumbling deity who's reacting to things instead of causing them. Watch that video from yesterday. He causes everything. That's the name of the video. Can you believe it? God causes everything. So what confidence do we have that you'll be able to capture him at the end? I, I just I, I feel better about myself. I've done push-ups uh, in the ensuing years. I really got my delts built up. Uh, I got a six-pack. Uh, I'm rocking the uh, rocking the, the traps. Yeah. So of course everything's different now. Is it? Is it? Satan has become craftier over the years. Yeah. So there's no guarantee that you can do that. So no evil is constantly been on a leash. God created it. It does its work. And then it goes away. Da 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 da. da. At one point of such an apparent disaster that evil could be off the leash or that evil's like out of control, at what point, at what point would somebody have to take the title God, which means subjector, and substitute like wishful thinker, uh, poor planner, uh, incompetent nincompoop? Yeah, we're getting worse here. How about loser? And eventually, really, monster? Because evil swallows up most of humanity. Well, I did send my son to try to die for him. We, we had no idea how stubborn people would be. That's the stupid Christian God. Uh, there are some sects, sects of Christianity that paint God as an optimist. I mean, he's, 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 they make him like themselves, like a human being. He wanted to keep evil away. He wanted to, but couldn't. Others paint him as a dictator. Oh, yeah, I'm going to talk about this. The Arminian versus the Calvinistic viewpoint. I hate those theological terms. Just They're just named after two people. The Armin guy and the Calvin guy. A couple of weirdos, really. Both those guys are nuts. But one guy, you know, thinks that um, God is uh, a, an, a, an optimist who wanted to keep evil away, but he couldn't. He tried. He couldn't. Everybody's free to do their own thing. His hands are tied. That's the Arminian type people. And then there's the Calvinist people. Who God is a dictator who, even though he's able to abolish evil, he refuses to do it. Well, I got a mean streak, I got to admit. The former so called deity is weak, the latter is a fiend. And the question is this is why you're here at MZTV is there no solution? Oh, hell yeah, there's a solution. I, I want you to do this. I want you to picture a woman attending a play, and she's becoming so engrossed in the production. And so distraught at the evil doings of the antagonist. There's a bad guy, right? He's got a handlebar mustache. And she's in love with the, with, with the protagonist. He's a very, very handsome guy. California tan, blonde hair and everything. So she's so upset, she actually rushes the stage to attack the, the bad guy. So she gets up the stage. She slaps and punches, kicks the actor, and the other actors are just standing there until somebody calls security, so security comes, but this is nice for the people, I have to say this, rather than calling the police, the theater manager, who has heard the ruckus, of course, comes out, what the hell's going on here, he takes the woman by the arm, okay, <sighs> pets her a little bit, takes her backstage, okay, so now the lady is removed, from the, you know, stage lighting, the music, the props, the actors, the dramatic music. So when she's backstage and sees a bunch of, you know, planks and lights and everything, ropes, you know, she starts to relax a little bit and come to her senses. And the theater manager puts his arm around her, you know, and he points to the lights in the rafters. And uh, he directs her attention to a series of two by fours supporting the houses on the stage that are not real and as she's standing backstage she looks directly into the eyes of another actor a woman who is waiting to hear a certain dialogue on stage which will be her cue to enter the story so i mean to call this lady excitable uh, would be the understatement of the year but this is how people act today with evil they're just excitable they're they're panicking this is my analogy i hope you can see it coming i hope you see it developing i hope you see it here people are freaking out over the evil on the stage of life this is that person who likes the idea at first is that god works through an intermediary that maybe there is this life and death struggle god versus satan you know 
Mighty Mouse versus... Who did Mighty Mouse fight against? It, was he grouchy? Did he fight against anybody? No. Superman against... Boris Karloff? No. Who's the enemy of Superman? Sorry. That's way back. I'm going. Luther. Some Luther. Luther Lasseter. No way. He was a, a billiards champion. Who cares? So, finally, this lady. She, um... Stop shaking. The manager is able to, you know, take his hands off her. She's in control now. And then the two of them are joined by a well-dressed gentleman holding a script. It's the playwright. And he opens the script to page 27, shows her the exact dialogue that the actor on stage is saying. And this is the exact exact dialogue. If you talk to Doris about this, I swear to God, I'll kill you. See, this is the kind of stuff that was making her nervous when she was out in her seat. So she gets shaken up again, just, just hearing it. It unnerves her. Until, until the playwright then, the guy who wrote the play, he turns ahead several pages to the point in the play where the FBI, see, they have to coddle this lady. Show her this thing. Take it easy. So they show her the part in the play where the FBI arrests the antagonist. And she's looking at it with her own eyes. So she goes, she's got a big sigh of, of relief there, but uh, there's more coming for this lady. Yeah, this is nothing. Because the playwright kind of winks at her, you know, winks at her. And he flips all the way to the back of the script to show this lady, at this point, you know, I'm feeling sorry for this lady. Okay, she's excitable. Showing her how it all ends. Okay. He's got a little light. Shows her the script backstage. It's kind of dark back there, but he's got a little light. She's breathing better now. He shows her how it all ends. The ending is so surprising to her. So heartwarming. So uplifting. So satisfyingly redeeming that she, like, my God, she catches her breath. Like, seriously? This is, this is how it ends? And the playwright says, yes, this is how it ends. And how does he know? He wrote the freaking play. So the theater manager then says, Lady, oh, excuse me, miss. Would you care to rejoin the action now? I mean, you're welcome to go back to your seat. Oh, yeah, now she can't wait. She can't wait. So she takes her seat again. And then now she goes back into the play. She rises and falls with the fortunes of the onstage players. But this time, with a calm expectation, holding in her heart the delicious payoff that she now knows is coming. Because after all, the playwright himself showed her the ending. For God has allowed us to know the secret of his plan. And it is this. He purposes in his sovereign will that all human history shall be consummated in Christ, that everything that exists in heaven or earth shall find its perfection and fulfillment in him. That's the script. It's called Ephesians 1, verses 9 and 10. And now I hope you are able to rejoin the action in progress calmly, knowing how the whole thing ends.